Hello everyone and welcome to this Friday's freebie quiz uh, with me Jane Allen and I shall be passing you over shortly to the fabulous Sean Williamson. First though I am going to quickly go through some of our house rules. They're fairly straightforward. Uh, you're going to see 40 questions. They are in four rounds of 10 questions. Each is worth one point. Round three is a picture round. The quizzes are all in English, uh, but we embolden bits um, in order to help uh, anybody whose uh, first language is not English. We ask you, please don't cheat. There's no prizes, there's no nothing, so please don't cheat. And if you really have to cheat, please just don't put your scores in at the end. Um, Lucy and I will be available on uh, Facebook and Twitter after the quiz, so we'd love to chat to you. And the only other thing then, that I need to ask you is please don't post the answers anywhere. Uh, people are playing along with this quiz uh, live and they are also playing the quiz um, at later on because we leave it up on uh, YouTube. So please don't post the answers anywhere. So there you go. Um, I shan't keep you any longer. I'm going to hand you straight over now to Sean Williamson. Hello, Sean. Hi, everybody. Yes, it's Sean Williamson here, star of stage and screen and my study. And as it looks like it's probably the uh, the only piece of TV work I'll be doing until 2021, I'm going to milk it to the hilt. Welcome, welcome back. It's our sixth week. Who can believe that? We've lasted longer than some Roman emperors I can think of. Uh, it's great to, to have you tuned in tonight. I know you're tuning in from all over the world. Uh, if it's your first quiz, a very special welcome to you. And uh, it is truly an international quiz. And I'm going to prove that by showing you uh, the top placings from last week. OK, now here they are. We've got a big uh, uh, row of people in joint third from last week. Look at this. We've got Nathan Stevens from Nigeria. Uh, John Poyser, the big fact hunt. Uh, Neil Dykes, the wild swans from the United Arab Emirates. They've tuned in. We've got the slope artists from, from Austria. Uh, they all score 37 points. Pat Gibson, the great Pat Gibson, uh, uh, plays along. Uh, hello, Pat, if you're joining us again tonight. I hope you are. He got 37 points. So well done to all of those people. In second place, we've got Quarren Teenage Fan Club from Scotland. Uh, well done to them. A little play on words there. If you remember, they were a band uh, from, from the 80s, I think. A very good band. They got 38. But our winners from last week were Kevin, uh, Kelvin and Yolandi Lang from New Zealand. A very big congratulations to them. 39 points. And some of the clues in that picture round were very difficult. So, Kelvin and Yolandi, uh, many congratulations. Uh, you were the champions last week. Let's see if you can do it again this week. Now, don't forget, everybody, put your score into the system, OK? Jane will tell you how to do that at the end. Because we really, uh, we'd love to know, get a more accurate picture of how many people are playing and from where. So I hope you're uh, well and healthy. I assume you are. If, if you tuned in, I hope you had a good week. Uh, it was a, a week and a half, wasn't it? Some old news coming out there from last week. Uh, apparently the 2020 Advent Calendar World Championships, they're going to have to be held behind closed doors. That's a shame, isn't it? And um, of course, the Flat Earth Society are, are worried because they think this social distancing could push people over the edge. No. Um, remember the old Queen's TV message? Remember that from a few weeks ago? That was very uplifting, wasn't it? And, and she did so well, they're going to give her her own Christmas special. So that's nice. And, uh, of course, uh, every night we get the old uh, coronavirus update, don't we, on television. Do you watch that? I don't know about you. I always remembered Hancock's half hour being a bit funnier than that. But never mind. Onwards and upwards. We're going to start our quiz. Uh, uh, if you're new, there are four rounds, uh, three rounds of 10 questions of general knowledge. And round three is always a picture round. OK, that's that's basically to try and confuse the boffins. All right. Because we've got some incredibly intelligent people who tune into this quiz. And the picture round is a, is a, is, is a fun round. And hopefully uh, it can give the boffins a few problems. All right. OK, well, let's start with round one. Here we go. Round one, question one. Good luck. This is the logo for which software Product. That is the logo of which software product? I wouldn't have a clue. I'm not very good on computers. I'm a bit, you know, stuck in the past, really. You know what really gets me? You know when you try and log into some of these sites and a, you get a computer asking you to prove that you're not a computer? 
what do we think of that? She's got to be so careful. You know, I, I got my bank payments through the other day and I'd been charged for a hooter, a red nose and a pair of size 20 shoes. I, I'm convinced my card had been clowned. Anyway, moving on. Uh, question uh, one, that's the logo for which software product. Question number two. If you got yourself into a downward dog position, what practice would you be indulging in? Clean answers only, please. If you got yourself into a downward dog position, what practice would you be indulging in? I hope you're keeping fit at home. Not always easy, is it? I mean, I spent an hour on the treadmill today. Next week, I'm going to turn it on. You know, give it a go. Question two, downward dog. Which practice are you indulging in? Good luck. Question three. The first song played on another planet was which song? Played by the Curiosity rover on the first anniversary of it landing on Mars. The first song played on another planet was which song? Played by the Curiosity rover on the first anniversary of it landing on Mars. Clues in the question. Question number four. If London has an underground and New York has a subway, what does Paris have? If London has an underground and New York has a subway, what does Paris have? I can tell you, I think this is right. London and Paris, there's just one station uh, that London has and Paris has that share the same name. Do you know what that is? You have a quick guess? Don't get a point for it. <clears throat> Temple. Temple, they both have a temple station. But if London has an underground, New York has a subway, what does Paris have? Round one, question number five. Gold and silver are hallmarked in the UK, along with which two other precious metals? Okay, I'll repeat that because I've said that wrong. Gold and silver are hallmarked in the UK, along with two other precious metals. Just name one of them. You don't have to name both. Just name one of them. Gold and silver are hallmarked. Two other precious metals are hallmarked as well. Just, just give us one of them. Put the hallmark on so you can tell it's not ooky. As Del Boy would have said. Gold, silver, and which other precious metal? You've got two to choose from. Do you know that one? Question six. In which present-day country was the composer... Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart born. Child prodigy himself of Mozart. Which present day country was he born in? And there he is, bless him. Did he, say, he composed Twinkle Twinkle Little Star at the age of three or something. Round one, question seven. What was the first name of the Italian artist Caravaggio? Now, here's a clue. It's a name he shares with a ninja turtle <laughs> and another artist of the high Renaissance period. What was the first name of the Italian artist Caravaggio? It's a name he shares with a ninja turtle and another artist of the high Renaissance period. I've had a week and a half, me, I tell you. Do you know earlier in the week, a woman called me a looker? Yeah. Well, the term she used was voyeur, but uh, we, won't, we won't go into that. First name of Caravaggio, question seven. Round one, question eight. This is the logo of which Hollywood film company that was formed on the 8th of May 1912 as the famous Players Film Company? And there it is on the screen. That's the logo of which Hollywood film company? They were formed uh, 108 years ago today. Happy birthday to you all. Famous players, film company, what do we know them as today? That's question eight. Question number nine. KV62 is the standard Egyptological designation for the tomb of which young pharaoh in the Valley of the Kings? <laughs> KV62 is the standard Egyptological designation for the tomb of which young pharaoh in the Valley of the Kings? of the kings there's not too many to pick from really is it have a go at that one i tell me if you can hear i'm sorry if it, no you, you probably can't hear that it's my neighbor he plays his music full blast 
And all he's been doing is playing music by Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, Dean Martin. I think he's got coronavirus. Coronavirus! Question 10. Romulus and Remus are the legendary founders of which European city? Romulus and Remus are the legendary founders of which European city? And there they are on that coin there. Which European city could that possibly be? I think that's a fairly gentle opening round. I think mean, it's quite tough, reasonably tough last week, which is even more incredible that, you know, some teams got 39, 38, 37. I think it was the pictures tripping him up a lot of the time. And we've got a very tricky pitch around again uh, this week, but it's good fun. OK, there's uh, all, all your uh, questions for round one. We're going to have a recap. Question one, that was the logo of which software product? Number two, if you're doing a downward dog, what practice are you indulging in? Number three, the first song played on another planet was which song? On the first anniversary of it landing on Mars by the Curiosity Rover. Number four, London's got an underground. New York's got a subway. What does Paris have? Number five, gold and silver are hallmarked along with two other precious metals. Just name one of them. Numero six. In which present-day country was the composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart born? Number seven, what was the first name of Caravaggio? It's the first name of a Ninja Turtle as well. And another artist, the High Renaissance period. Number eight, you saw the logo of which Hollywood film company? You can call Famous Players. Number nine, KV62 is the designation for the tomb of which young pharaoh in the Valley of the Kings? And number 10, Romulus and Remus were the founders of which European city? Good luck with those. First rule of the quiz, don't leave a blank. Write anything. You never know. OK, well, good luck with that. We're going to give you the answers now. Uh, the logo of that software product was... Microsoft XL. You saw the X, and then there's there's quite a, a, a lightly shaded L off to the right of it. Have you picked that up or not? Do you know what? Because I think we're just accepting XL. So if you saw an X and L, you might even have written that if you didn't know it. Well done. Numero two, you would have been indulging in yoga if you were doing a downward dog yoga. It's tricky. It's like, do any of you do yoga? Is, I find it like I went down to my local yoga group and I said, can I join in? They said, well, how flexible are you? I said, well, I can't do Tuesdays. And they also found out I was about as flexible as a Rivita. So I don't do that anymore. Uh, question number three. First song played on another planet. It had been there a year, so it played Happy Birthday to You. I hope you guessed that even if you didn't know it. Originally written by Patty and Mildred Hill, the sisters. And originally called Good Morning to You to welcome children to school, I think. Anyway, question number four. The answer was the Metro. Paris has a Metro. I'm sure many of you have been on it. It was uh, completed in 1900 and it's got 302 stations. Answer to number five. You could have had platinum or palladium. Years ago when I used to set quizzes, it was only three. Gold, silver and platinum. But palladium has been legally hallmarked since the 1st of June 2000, 1st of January 2010. The answer to number six. In which present-day country was Mozart born? Austria. Salzburg, 1756. Answer to number seven. Michelangelo uh, was the uh, first name of Caravaggio. The answer to number eight. It was Paramount Pictures, used to be called famous, uh, famous Players. And the there are 22 stars around the uh, image of the mountain. And that is because uh, originally to get going, they signed 22 star actors or actresses. The answer to number nine, KV62 uh, represents the tomb of Tutankhamun. Well done if you knew the name of another young pharaoh. That's all I can say, which I know a few of you would because you're very clever. And number 10, Romulus and Remus founded Rome. How did you get on? Hopefully that was quite a gentle intro into this week's uh, online international quiz brought to you by Quizzing TV. Okay, we've got a few shout outs uh, this week. Don't forget, if you want a shout out, just get in touch. We've got Tia, birthday girl, night. Happy birthday. Uh, we've got Mickey and Tony Atkinson, Ewan and Danielle, Mick and Fee, Professor Quiz Witty. Very good. Teresa and Nigel Fuggle, Jake and Derry, Amisha and Rohit, seven and nine. Welcome. 
Tom, Joe, Zach and Terry. Tracy Dean, Emily, Ruby and Susie Knight. I think that's a Knight family from Sheppy with Margaret and Derek in Herne Bay. The Purple Sues. There's lots of you. The Stintons, Rose and Steve, Tasha Matt Clark, the Zubas in Florida. Welcome to you. Uh, Martin Webb, Ernie Lou. Emmy Lou, sorry. <laughs> Ernie Lou. Just rename you. Emmy Lou, Tracy and Carl Mundy and family. Grant, Stanley, Robert Forward, the Christmas Gang, Katie and Matt in Soham. Tasha Matt Clark. Dave and Joe Burns, did I say? I think that's covered everybody. Let us know if you'd like a shout out. Welcome to you all, and thank you uh, for your continued support of the quiz. We're going to toast the key workers after the next round. We always raise a little glass to the key workers out there, particularly the NHS, doing a grand job out there. Okay, already it's uh, it's round two. You know, people often say to me, they say, you know, uh, well, here, first of all, here's Sean's teaser, right? This is Sean's teaser. Now, if you're new to it, this doesn't get you a point. It's just to keep the old grey matter going throughout round two because sometimes they take a bit of working out. Who is ninth in line to the British throne? I hate these questions and I apologise for asking it, but you've got the whole round to try and work that one out. There isn't a point available. It's a bit of fun. Who is ninth in line to the British throne? Because that changes every couple of years, doesn't it? At the rate they knock them out. Anyway, you know, people say to me, Sean, you know, you old brain box, you're clever. I'm not clever. Not clever because uh, a lot of these questions are uh, picked for me or I get them from a book. You know, because I, I thought I knew more than I did. I thought I knew what the poop deck on a ship was for. Turned out I didn't. So anyone who was on the cutty site that day, I can only apologise. I'm sorry. Who is ninth in line to the British throne? I'll tell you the answer to that. At the end, it's not worth anything. Okay, round number two, question number one. Which comic actor entered a contest in 1920 to find his own lookalike? And apparently he didn't do very well. I've heard different reporters. Apparently he came 20th. I've heard another story where he came third. But one source says he came 20th. So which comic actor entered a contest in 1920 to find his own lookalike? And didn't do very well, ironically. And there he is. What's the name of that actor? Question number two is trickier. Which is the smallest country in the European Union? Now, I'll do you a favour and tell you, it's not tiny microstates like the Vatican City, uh, San Marino. It's not those sort of countries. Uh, I think it's based on trade. It's got to be big enough to trade for a start. Not Andorra, so it's not one of the tiny countries. So which is the smallest country in the European Union, an official European Union member? Good luck with that. Not easy. Question number three. Which fruit sits on the top of the Wimbledon Men's Singles Trophy? Which fruit sits on the top? Of the Wimbledon Men's Singles Trophy, it's an image of a fruit is part of the trophy and it's on the lid. Which fruit sits on the top of the Wimbledon Men's Singles Trophy? I like fruit. There's still shortages out there. They went into the supermarket earlier, tried to buy some conference pears, but they were all in a meeting. <sighs> Question number four. This takes me back. The logo for the Spanish lollipops, Chopper Chops, was created by which surrealist artist? The logo for the Spanish lollipops, Chopper Chops, was created by which surrealist artist? I used to buy them when the kids were young. It's a great excuse to get stuck in yourself, isn't it, when they've gone to bed? Where have all the Chopper Chips gone, Daddy? To know. Mm -hmm. Which surrealist artist created that logo? Good luck. Question number five. The biblical character Samson lost his renowned strength when his what was cut off. Now stop it, all right? Stop it. I know what your minds are like. Biblical character Samson lost his renowned strength when his what was cut off. Talking about losing, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to lose weight, eating too much. I've got some of those talking scales recently. That speaks volumes, doesn't it? <sighs> Moving on. Question number six. North Island, South Island, Stewart Island are the three largest islands that make up which island nation? 
North Island, South Island, Stewart Island are the three largest islands that make up which island nation? And a beautiful country it is, but what is it? Number seven, bit of science and nature for you. Which member of the grass family is the fastest growing of all plants? Which member of the grass family is the fastest growing of all plants? You into science and nature? I, I watched that National Geographic. There was a program on there recently about a tree that grows paper and not leaves. A terrific documentary. Documentary. Question number eight. Who delivered his I Have a Dream speech in front of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. in 1963? Who delivered his I Have a Dream speech in front of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. in 1963? And there he is, old Lincoln himself. Honest Abe was his nickname. And the rail splitter. That's what he was called as well. Question number nine. The 1908 Summer Olympics were due to be hosted in Rome, but were moved to London after which volcano erupted, leading to Italy diverting funds to rebuild Naples? The 1908 Summer Olympics were due to be hosted in Rome, but were moved to London after which volcano erupted, leading to Italy diverting funds to rebuild Naples? OK, even if you don't know that, you can always there's always a sort of choice of two or three with Italian volcanoes, isn't there? I always get the wrong one, by the way. I did a quiz on Saturday morning and picked the wrong one out of two. But it's very famous. And uh, I think this has been a reasonable round. Let's let's put in a, a, a trickier question, I think, for round uh, for number 10. Mountain, plains and gravies are the three living species of which distinctive African herd animals? That's probably the toughest question of the round, apart from number two, I would say. Round two, question 10. Mountain, plains, and gravies are the three living species of which distinctive African herd animals? Good luck with those. Don't leave any blanks. Have a guess. We'll have a little recap for you. So question one was which comic actor entered a contest in 1920 to find his own lookalike and came 20th. It didn't do very well indeed. Number two, the smallest country in the European Union. Number three, which fruit sits atop the Wimbledon men's singles trophy? Number four, the logo of the Spanish lollipops Chupa Chups was created by which surrealist artist? Number five, the biblical character Samson lost his renowned strength when his what was cut off. Who er misses? Number six, North Island, South Island, Stewart Island. Which island? Which island nation? They're the three largest islands. Of. Number seven, which member of the grass family is the fastest growing of all plants? Number eight, who delivered the I Have a Dream speech? Washington, 1963. Number nine, 1908 Summer Olympics uh, were disrupted uh, by the eruption of which volcano? In, in or around Naples. And number 10, mountain plains gravies three species of which distinctive African herd animal. Put down your answers. We'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. Because here are the answers. Number one, we showed you an image of Charlie Chaplin. Now, he entered the competition, obviously, in the guise of his most famous creation, uh, The Little Tramp, and he didn't do very well, ironically. Uh, the answer to number two, is Malta, the smallest country in the European Union, is, is Malta in the EU. I did, I did say not Europe, in the EU. I, my great-grandmother was from Gozo because my great-grandfather was a cook in the Navy in World War I. I wonder if I can get a passport. The answer to number three, <clears throat> a pineapple is on the top of the, uh, the Wimbledon Men's Singles Trophy. It used to be a symbol of wealth. They were obviously incredibly expensive first came into uh, the country. Number four, the Chupa Chups logo was created by Salvador Dali. Just Dali will do. 
The answer to number five. Samson lost his strength when his what was cut off his hair. Cut off, of course, by the dastardly Delilah. who would be quids in these days, wouldn't she, with a pair of scissors going around people's houses? Well, that would be illegal, of course. Uh, number six, the islands, uh, the island nation, New Zealand. <clears throat> Excuse me. The 600 islands, uh, approximately in New Zealand, but the three biggest are North, South and Stuart. Well done if you said that. The answer to number seven, bamboo. Now, bamboo, unbelievably, has been known to grow 91 centimetres in a single day. 91 centimetres. Astonishing. Number eight. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered the uh, I Have a Dream speech. We'd like, I think we're just accepting King officially. King, because in all the Grand Prix quizzes that Quizzing UK do, they, they, they will accept uh, a surname only. So if you said King, well done. If you said the lot, even better for you. And of course, the Stevie Wonder song, Happy Birthday, is a tribute to the great man himself. The answer to number nine, it was Vesuvius. There's always a shout out between Etna, Stromboli and Vesuvius. It's Vesuvius because it's near Naples. And the answer to number 10, that herd, uh, some of you might have said elephant because of the, we said about distinctive and being distinctive. It was the zebra. Is it zebra or zebra? It's zebra, isn't it? Zebra crossing. <clears throat> some people say zebra, don't they? So how did you get on with those? I don't think that was too, too tough. You know, I think a lot of them were gettable or guessable. So hopefully you did well in that round. Let us know, as always. I always say let us know if you think it's too difficult, too easy. And we'll keep teasing away at it for as long as we do this. And Sean's teaser. Who was ninth in line to the British throne? It was Princess Beatrice of York. I hate that question because, as I say, it changes every couple of years, doesn't it? Uh, ninth in line to the British throne was Princess Beatrice of York. Well done if you said that for absolutely no points whatsoever. Right, we're going to just do a very quick toast to the key workers. Uh, it's always a, a chance to get on the uh, G&T early for me. Not that I ever need an excuse. Thank you for keeping us all safe and well. Uh, who's going to give a shout-out last week? Because I keep forgetting people. So I've, I've reeled them all off over the weeks. I don't think I've ever personally thanked firemen. I've got firemen this week. And, and the uh, our, our sanitation engineers, which used to be called dustmen when I was a kid. Uh, they do a great job as well for us as well. So particularly here's to those two, and obviously the hard workers of the NHS Here's to you all. Now, round three, as you all know, uh, if, uh, if this your, particularly if it's your sixth week of doing it, and if it is, thank you, <clears throat> is a picture round. Now, uh, I've got to say, this week I'd be stuffed on this round. Uh, I wouldn't do very well at all. And that's why it's in there, to try and trip up some of the boffins and also to try and uh, please some of our, our younger viewers. And this week, I think in particular, we're going to please them very much because we're going to show you uh, the images of 10 Lego characters. Uh, and we'd like you to know which character they are supposed to represent. Not the name of an actor. Uh, which character are they supposed to represent? A few of them uh, will, recognize as, will be recognisable as actors. We want the character name. So we're going to show you the first five so you get the idea. And there they are. Okay, so which which characters are they supposed to be? Uh, in fact, number one can only be a real person. My bad. Number one's a real person. The other four on, on that screen, we need the name of their character. Now... <laughs> Number three looks like an ex-girlfriend, but I won't tell you what her name was. Um, so what are we thinking? As I say, I think we, this will uh, please a lot of people. It wouldn't have, I'd be furious, uh, personally, because I'm not big into a lot of these film franchises. But you will recognise them, I've no doubt. So number one's a real person. The other... Or are characters? How are you getting on with those? There's a bit of a visual clue to number four. Number five looks gettable. Number three, I wouldn't have a clue. Number two, I wouldn't have a clue. I reckon I'll get three of those, but you're brighter than me, so hopefully you'll get all five. Let's have a look at uh, six to ten, then we can come back to those to those five. 
what about those ones? Uh, six and seven. Don't look too bad, do they? Eight and ten, I wouldn't have a clue, I'll be honest with you. Number nine, I'd have a guess at. So there we are. What are we making of these? As I just say, hopefully, uh, particularly if you're on a team, uh, if you put all your strengths together as a team, you'll be able to recognize a few of those. Number 10. <laughs> Haven't got a Scooby-Doo. But what about you? Let's show you one to five again. As I said before, one is a real person. Two, three, four, and five are from film franchises, the like. Number two looks very grumpy. Number three looks very seductive and fails ethically. Number five needs air cut. That is four. Number one needs air transplant. We'll show you six to ten again. Of course, they're all holding things. They're all holding things that can give you a clue to their character, I should imagine. So I'll give you another 30 seconds on that. Even seven, I'm rubbish at that. Hardly ever watched it. And it does keep cropping up in quizzes. So I thought, should I, you know, watch all, whatever it is, 600 episodes uh, on the off chance of getting a point right in a quiz every now and again, I thought, nah. Okie dokie, right. I think that's enough time. Here are your answers for the picture round. It's round three, it's the picture round. Good luck. I hope you did better than me. Number one, as I did say several times, is the only one based really on a real person. That's William Shakespeare, the Bard of Avon. Stratford. Number two. Professor Snape, which even I know is from the Harry Potter series. Professor Snape. Number three. Number three, Princess Leia. That's Princess Leia. Apparently, I was told you sh I should know her from the bra, but it means nothing to me. I'm sure it meant a lot to you, though, and you got it right. Number four. I'll have known this because of the hammer in his hand. Four. Number five, I'd have had a guess at Jack Sparrow. Yeah, Captain Jack Sparrow will accept Sparrow. Well done if you got all of those right. Number six, William Wallace. <laughs> that was played by uh, Mel Gibson on film in Braveheart. Number seven, saxophone will give it away if you are a fan of The Simpsons. It's Lisa. We're, uh, I think we're accepting Simpson. Are we just accepting Simpson? No, it's got to be Lisa Simpson. It's got to be Lisa Simpson. If you've got the first name wrong, we're not accepting it. It is Lisa Simpson. Number eight, Wicket. Now, there's a little story behind this because a great pal of mine is Warwick Davis, and uh, he played Wicket as an actor, and he has the most, uh, he has the most models he is the actor with the most models made of his characters. Six of the characters he's played uh, are available in model form like that. Amazing. Well done, Warwick Davis. Number nine, Gandalf. What's he carrying? What's he carrying? And number 10, again, I wouldn't, wouldn't have had a clue. Well done if you got this. Sheldon. Sheldon Cooper from the Big Bang Theory. So, uh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe six of, six of them were instantly gettable. 
maybe seven. Hopefully we uh, got the balance right there. Again, let us know. I hope you did well on that. I think I'd have got seven at a pinch. Already, it's time for our final round. It's round four. Again, it's 10 general knowledge questions. Uh, we're going to try and ramp it up slightly during this round. Um, yeah, uh, question number one. Fourth and final round. The badge of which Hogwarts house features a badger? I can hear the size of disappointment if you're not a Harry Potter fan, but a lot of you will know this, especially some of the younger people in your household. The badge of which Hogwarts house features a badger? About the only uh, lucky thing I can do, I'm writing a book about quiz, and I'll tell you all about that uh, next week. But uh, So luckily I can get on with that during lockdown. Um, I've got other new projects on the go. I've written a musical, a musical about a builder who rips everyone off. It's called A Roofer on the Fiddle. I've got great, great hopes, uh, great hopes for that. Um, but there you go. This was from a much more successful writer than me. The badge of which Hogwarts house features a badger. Question two. Even now, which Nobel Prize winning in couples papers from as far back as the 1890s, even their cookbooks are too dangerous to touch and are kept in special lead boxes? Even now, even in 2020, which Nobel Prize winning couple's papers from as far back as the 1890s, even their cookbooks are too dangerous to touch and are kept in special lead boxes. Question number three. What is the name of the Islamic holy month where most healthy adult Muslims do not drink or eat between dawn and sunset? What's the name of the Islamic holy month where most healthy adult Muslims do not drink or eat between dawn and sunset? I'd struggle with that. I'd struggle with that. I love me food. Although I had a mishap the other day. I mixed up my I can't believe it's not butter with my real butter. Now I don't know what to believe. So... Yeah, don't mess with my food intake. What's the name of the Islamic holy month where most healthy adult Muslims do not drink or eat between dawn and sunset? Good luck. Question number four. John Travolta plays the role of Vincent Vega in which 1994 Quentin Tarantino film? John Travolta plays the role of Vincent Vega in which 1994 Quentin Tarantino film? And there he is, the handsome devil. Do you know that one? Quite a famous uh, image of him there. Question five. In which sport do teams compete for the Vince Lombardi Trophy? In which sport do teams compete for the Vince Lombardi Trophy? I'm just trying to imagine. Can you imagine the lineups of uh, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, Dancing on Ice? They're going to be the biggest names ever, aren't they? Everyone's skint. I'm, I'm going to try and get on one. I went on The Voice a couple of years ago, didn't get through. Looking back, I shouldn't have sang Don't Turn Around. But it's easy in hindsight, isn't it? In which sport do teams compete for the Vince Lombardi Trophy? That's question five. Question six. What is the largest desert in Asia? There's a couple, couple of biggies to pick from. Not easy. What is the largest desert in Asia? I can think of two. I would guess at one of them. What should joggers like your geography? The largest desert in Asia. Question six. Question seven. In Roman times, which metal was mostly mined in Cyprus, leading to it being called Metal of Cyprus and later Cuprum? In Roman times, which metal was mostly mined in Cyprus, leading to it being called Metal of Cyprus and later Cuprum? Are you reading more during lockdown? Are you reading more? 
you see all those books but I'm a, I'm a bit of a reader i just finished a, a, a book called 50 things to do before you die and unbelievably shouting help isn't one of them you wouldn't believe that would you roman times which metal mined in cyprus metal of cyprus later changed to cuprum good luck to all you science and nature buffs on that one question eight <clears throat> In which country can you find the largest population of feral camels in the world? In which country can you find the largest population of feral or wild camels in the world? Not easy, that one. And there's one of them. I reckon that's a dromedary. Because he's got one hump. And do you know how I remember that? I think dromophobia is the fear of being on your own. So one, one hump. Being on your own is one. And battery and camels have two. And it's B for the prefix by. B-I means two. That's how I remember them anyway. Us quizzes, we've all got our own little ways of uh, systems of remembering things. From which country can you find the largest population of feral or wild camels in the world? Not easy. Question number nine. What does the HP in HP source stand for? I bet you're angry if you're a daddy's fan, aren't you? you? Must be furious. What does the HP in HP source stand for? I've got a little tip for you, right? I went into Wilkinson's the other day. I bought 4,000 raffle tickets for $2.99. They're normally a pound a strip. I'm up. He's got to use this sometimes. You know what I mean? Question nine, HP source. What does HP stand for? And our final question. I can't believe it's come around this quickly. Croatia, Serbia, Slovenia, Montenegro are amongst the countries that were formed as a result of the breakup of which European country in the 1990s? Croatia, Serbia, Slovenia, Montenegro are amongst the countries that were formed as a result of the breakup of which European country? In the 1990s. And that's it. We'll have a recap. Excuse me. <coughs> Forgive me for that. There we go. Uh, question number one. The badge of which Hogwarts house is a badger? Number two. The Nobel Prize winning couple. We need their name. Uh, uh, even their stuff. Even in these days, their stuff is kept in special lead boxes. Number three. What is the name of the Islamic holy month? Where most healthy adult Muslims drink, don't drink or eat between dawn and sunset. Number four, we showed an image of John Travolta from which 1994 Quentin Tarantino film? Number five, in which sport do teams compete for the Vince Lombardi trophy? Number six, or what is the largest desert in Asia? Number seven, in Roman times, which metal was mostly mined in Cyprus, leading to it being called Metal of Cyprus and later Cupra? Number eight, in which country can you find the largest population of feral camels in the world? Number nine, the HP on HP source, what does the HP stand for? And number 10, Croatia, Serbia, Slovenia, Montenegro. Uh, they are countries that were formed as a result of the breakup of which European country in the 90s? Good luck with those. There was, I think there was two or three in there that could, uh, could, could throw some people. Right, as I say, don't leave any gaps. Quickly fill them in. And good luck. Here are the answers. The Hogwarts house... Uh, that features a badger is Hufflepuff. Wouldn't have had a clue. Well done if you got it. The answer to number two. Mary and Pierre Curie, all their kits, uh, even these days, is kept in special lead boxes because of their work with uh, radiation. Uh, Mary Curie eventually died, uh, it's believed, of uh, causes brought about by radiation, whereas Pierre Curie had his head run over by a horse and cart. True. Number three, it's Ramadan was the Islamic holy month, and I believe it's uh, still running until the 23rd of this month. The answer to number four, uh, Pulp Fiction was the film where Travolta played Vincent Vega. And I think he has something in common with Elvis in that film. I think he dies on the toilet. Number five, the answer, the Vince Lombardi trophy is competed for in American football. It's for winning the Super Bowl. Answer to question number six. 
It's the Gobi Desert. The Gobi Desert, it's uh, out there. It's sandwiched between North China and South Mongolia and is very big. The answer to number seven. It's copper. It used to be known as cuprum, which leads to its chemical symbol CU. Copper was the answer we're after. The answer to number eight. It's in Australia. You'll find all those feral camels in the world. There's more than a million of them. Now, you might remember a question last week. I asked you in which country would you find the GAN, G-H-A-N, railway. Uh, and that was Australia. And it's named after GAN, after the Afghan people who's, uh, who often populated uh, Australia. And I think that's where the camels might have come from. Don't quote me on it. Question number nine. The HP and HP source stands for Houses of Parliament. It was a big favourite of Harold Wilson, I seem to remember. Back in the 60s, he championed uh, HP source. And number 10. All of those countries used to be a part of Yugoslavia before it broke up in the 1990s. Well, I hope you enjoyed the quiz this week. Uh, work out your score and feed it into the system, all right? Jane's going to be on after this to, to let you uh, know how to do that. She'll give you uh, more information about any forthcoming, upcoming events. Uh, what can I say? Um, hope to see you all back here, uh, same time, same place. Uh, Next Friday, 8 o'clock. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I hope you are. Give us any feedback, positive or negative, and we'll do our best to put it right. I'd like to thank David Burton. He knows why. I'd like to thank our tech whiz, Jules, and I'd like to hand you back to the Queen of Quiz, Jane Allen. Thank you so much, Sean. What uh, a brilliant quiz show host you are, as always. And so funny as well. I was laughing my socks off at some of the stuff that you were coming out with. Thank you very much for that. Hope everybody enjoyed uh, playing along as well. Um, and we would love to see your scores. Um, and uh, so if you head to Quest dot quizzing dot com you can put your scores in and see how you would have scored against uh, quizzes from around the world um, we had the winners last week were from um, New Zealand um, and we had people um, from the United Arab Emirates and Nigeria uh, in the uh, top three there as well so it'd be brilliant uh, for everybody to be able to see just how wide-ranging this quiz is so please uh, head to quest.quizzing.com and let us know how you got on and also if you head to Twitter and Facebook, uh, we will be there to have a chat to you. So come on over and chat with us. Thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Bye bye.